Dune, 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 Dune. This is one of the most intimidating sci-fi books I have ever had to review for the channel. For several reasons, obviously. The first and foremost is quite frankly, it's the best-selling science fiction book of all time. I didn't know it still held that record, but after doing a little bit of research this video, it does. Holy crap. It's the monolith within the community and something that is respected and revered by so many notable names. It's in a lot of very well-known authors, creators, top 10 books of all time. And in addition to that, it's a book I've made quite vocally known that I don't necessarily love here on the channel. I read it a long time ago, put up a kind of negative review, and forgot about it from there. But with the recent hype around the movie and the love it consistently gets from people I agree with and with my own evolving opinions over the last few years, I figured let's give this one another go. And I definitely like it more than I did. And I have more thoughts on this book than I ever thought I would. But let's go ahead and get into what exactly Dune is. Dune is the story of warring noble houses operating in a space fiefdom society, which is already pretty against what was typical for science fiction at the time. In fact, if you look at a lot of sci-fi at this day and age, it's very optimistic views of the future, the exploration of the highs humanity can reach. Dune kind of pretty heavily contrasts that with a focus on the flaws within us that we may never outgrow. Greed, obsession, hunger for power, ego are all issues that plague humanity still within this book. Combine that with Frank Herbert's very uh, negative outlook on pretty much like every form of organization almost, every power structure, where he's constantly just showing how power and groups will use each other and people for their own gain, and Dune becomes like the quite negative nihilistic view of the future. Uh, this is a dark depiction of what is possibly to come for humanity. And that even extends into religion. Religion is something that most sci-fi books kind of either just like barely touch on or just forget entirely. But it is a focal point for the narrative within Dune. And again, using this idea of exploitation, that's quite heavily realized within the religious side of this story as well. There's quite a heavy look at spirituality and things along those lines. It's it's thorough. And that's actually pretty much the most positive thing I can say about Dune, and I mean that in a good way. Dune, it has a lot of ideas, quite a bit to say, and philosophy to explore, and it does it all very thoroughly. If you are a reader who likes to get into text because of ideas, I can absolutely understand how Dune will be one of the best books for you to read. Top 10, no question. And in addition to that, its influence is so spectacular. I mean, if I, I just specifically in this reread of Dune, I see how much Star Wars took from this. And surprisingly myself, I picked up a little bit more Wheel of Time influence. I don't know how direct that is, but it's there. And yeah, Star Wars is essentially more digestible Dune for the masses, is that fair to say? I think it is. It's essentially George Lucas going and taking from those Japanese samurai movies he was inspired by and Dune and putting them together. I was not aware how bad that was until this read through. Wow. Now, if I'm going to continue the praise train for Dune, also, there's few books out there that have the level of world building Dune does. This is on that Erickson, Tolkien, Jordan level, where there's just nuance and detail thrown and layered and layered and layered in. Now, if you're one of these readers who needs every bit of world building introduced to your uh, story to pay off in the narrative, you're not going to get that. There's a lot of just luscious enjoyment in fleshing out everything around this story. And the story itself, I actually quite like. Uh, this subversion of what is to be expected, and I've spoiled for myself what the end trajectory for Paul Atreides is, and I like its setup in this first book. And this first book is a pretty complete story. You can just read this and be done and satisfied. But uh, yeah, Frank Herbert did a great job in conceiving and putting forward this idea, the ideas, I should say, behind Dune. And in a final piece I actually did appreciate more this time, his characters are quite addictive. I didn't find them to be the most well-realized of all time. I didn't find them to be like the most 
uh, nuanced in their development, but I like who they are established in being. I like the ideas behind these characters. And if you're noticing a trend here, I sure like the ideas of Dune but my criticisms come in when we move on from there. I don't like the way Dune is told. I struggle with so much of what Herbert focuses on. He really likes to pay attention to things that just don't benefit the narrative, in my opinion. And he's redundant about several things that he shouldn't be, especially when it comes to the way his characters kind of present their own plans or ideas or opinions on each other. It's just handed to you again and again, and you're like, I know, I get it. Stop. And I would even say at some points his characters come across as rather stupid for not picking up on things that are pretty obvious. And they're not meant to be dumb, they just act that way. Specifically around ideas and scenes of betrayal and how over the top evil the conflicting family is for the Atreides was just a little much. The pacing is also rough and not the smoothest, but I, I, should, I don't have very high expectations for older sci-fi space opera fantasy uh, in that sense. So I'm, I'm okay with that, but mm, it, it's kind of like I'm conflicted, right? This is where the warring thoughts come into play with Dune. I would love so much of what Frank Herbert was trying to create. Like if you lay down the blueprints, I think, Okay, amazing. Yes, I can see how Dune lives up to his reputation for so many people, specifically around Paul and his development through Spice and with the people he's living with. I found it to be really engaging. I like the conclusion of his arc without getting into spoilers and how he's not what you think he is and how uh, <laughs> Frank's concluding message was essentially along the lines of how an individual savior can never be the solution. But the actual construction of this story went terribly in my opinion. I just think he is clumsy when it comes to how his plot moves forward, handling how his characters interact with one another. Frank Herbert is not a great storyteller in that sense. He's a phenomenal ideas guy, maybe one of the best to ever put a pin to the page, but he's not exactly a uh, smooth storyteller. But I don't, hate how Paul is presented, and I definitely don't hate the Freeman who he interacts with, this society that is inspired so heavily by Middle Eastern cultures. In fact, I would say Frank Herbert did a tremendous amount of research when crafting this, and he clearly has a lot of love and care to make this society be rich and well-realized and, again, more in the right than the societies we're seeing Paul come from. Paul also doesn't come into the society and totally change them. Instead, he is changed by them. But then he kind of falls into this prophecy role that we've seen a million times. And I love the dilemma Paul is put in as a result of these prophecies. Getting into mild spoilers, we have this idea of, should he go down this destined path, this, oh, we're going to overthrow this corrupt system that's in power at the cost of countless lives? Is that worth it? Is it something he's willing to do? That's a heavy question, and it's one that I'm so happy Frank Herbert touched on, because we often see these chosen one types just be like, oh yes, I'm going to overthrow the system and go down this path, and that's such a great thing. But what's the cost of that? And Dune asks that question and goes pretty far into it, and I like that. Let's go ahead and get into the ratings here, because this is where I think I'm going to actually have the most polarization for people, but all right, let's go ahead. Character is the one I'm most conflicted on, but also had probably the biggest improvement for the first time I read it. I thought a lot of the characters the first time through were just completely forgettable, but they stood out a lot stronger in this read of Dune. I actually really latched on to quite a few members of the cast here. Overall, I'm probably gonna label it like a, a seven out of 10. And the biggest thing holding it back is just how clunkily Frank Herbert handles them at times. It's genuinely upsetting. Next up is world building. And world building, Dune's world is tremendous in every sense of the word. And it's gonna be a solid nine out of 10 for me. There are few that are on its level. And while you may not be the biggest fan of its delivery to you, you'll still appreciate what's being crafted. The plot, mm, again, this is one of those that's it's, it's a good plot. It's a good concept, but the way Frank brought it to me just was tedious at times. So many things should have happened faster or characters should have come to realizations quicker, but they just weren't because Frank just decided to not let them. And so because of that reason, I'm gonna leave it at a six out of 10. I wish it could be higher, but it's like, no, if your plot itself moves forward in a way that is frustrating, I don't care how interesting the story itself is, I can't enjoy it. And that's gonna bring me to pacing, another weakness of Dune for me. I would say it's average at best, so I'll label it a five. 
Uh, it's certainly not a quick story to go, and I'm willing to have a slower pace story if we have a lot of payoff, which we do in Dune, don't get me wrong, especially as I said with how immersed in this world you can become, but I'm still frustrated overall with the way we move through this story because I know so many things could have been easily smoothed out and allowed for even more page time for other elements of this story I did enjoy. So I'm gonna leave it at a five. And then I have that specific category for science fiction of how well did it accomplish what it set out to? How well did Frank Herbert accomplish his goal? Another tricky one here, but it's a little more in Dune's favor because the overall themes that Frank Herbert dives into, he realizes extremely well. As I said, this is like the most thorough book ever in terms of theming. Nothing is left unexplored. The ideas of corruption in humanity, our own demons inside of us, humanity versus nature, humanity versus institutions, the corrupting influence of power, none of that is not fully put forward. And each character really embodies different beliefs and pushes forward these philosophical ideas quite well. So this is gonna be an 8.5 out of 10 for me. It's It's got issues in its delivery because sometimes people are overly just explaining and things along those lines. Herbert's not the smoothest storyteller. Again, I'll stop saying that now, but uh, it still paid off in Dune's favor there. And finally, we have my total enjoyment of Dune out of 10. <sighs> This time it's better than the last. I think the last time I reviewed Dune in my own head, I was sitting at like a four out of 10. It just wasn't something I really loved or enjoyed. And now coming into it here, it's higher. I would label it as 6.5. I am a plot reader. I like a story that is very well put together and told to me cleverly and smoothly. That is not Frank Herbert's strengths. And so it brings this down a lot but it's also got phenomenal ideas and strong enough characters for me to enjoy. So I'm willing to give it a little bit of a higher ranking than I did before. I also am gonna put the big fat asterisk next to the 6.5 out of 10 that this deserves its classic status, not only for being what it is in the time it was put out, which just kind of makes it something special for a whole other reason, but how well it's aged and held up. I still found this to be a solid read today when we have such an advanced version of science fiction and we're living in the day and age of sci-fi in so many other ways. Like this still stands out in the crowded sci-fi fantasy landscape and it's still, one of the few space operas that really lives up to that name space opera to me. It, it, it earns that. I know whenever someone reviews a super well-loved book like this in even the slightest negative sense, people go crazy saying like, you're objectively wrong for X, Y, Z reasons. Well, I'm not because every review is a subjective experience. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think of Dune? And specifically, what did you think of Frank Herbert's ability as a storyteller? Because that's where I struggled the most with this one. I also just, I really want to hit on again, the display of theme here is truly impressive. Frank Herbert is someone who knows how to craft an idea, put it into his text, and really deliver on that. I get very unsatisfied when there, I feel like there's a book that touches on an idea, but doesn't really delve into it, There's a lot of guilty examples of that, but no, Frank Herbert fully explores every idea that came across his mind while building Dune. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you have not already, Patreon for support, what I do here, and have a good one. Peace.